So Dr. Scholz, there's a term I've heard recently in our conference with Dr. Moyad and Dr. Kwan where they were talking about prostate cancer debulking. Now, I think that this term has been used maybe in clinical trials and some of the things that I've seen, but it really hasn't been explained to patients. Even when I Googled it on YouTube, it really wasn't fully discussed. So can you explain what this is and do patients need to pay attention to it? So it really applies to the situation where people have metastatic disease. The idea is historically, if there's any metastatic disease, the clinicians kind of ignored what was in the prostate, figuring correctly perhaps that the disease outside the prostate is what's going to define the future of that patient. That's what's dangerous. And what stayed home in the prostate is less dangerous. That's Men can exist and coexist with tumors in their prostate. But now we're starting to understand that, uh, especially in situations where there aren't that many metastatic lesions, that we can eradicate those metastatic lesions. And then you're left with the question, well, should we still ignore that tumor that's back in the prostate? And so debulking is sort of an incomplete treatment that, uh, and incomplete treatments with cancer have always thought to be suboptimal. The cancer is just going to grow back. There is an advantage to getting rid of as much cancer as you can. This may partly be because uh, prostate cancer tends to be slower growing. It doesn't metastasize as easily as other cancers. And so even if your debulking process doesn't cure everything, it's still going to buy you significant time. And there is an advantage to having fewer cancer cells in your body. So the specifics of debulking would be either surgical removal of the prostate or radiation therapy to the prostate or some other definitive treatment to the prostate, freezing, laser, HIFU, uh, to eradicate the primary tumor. Uh, I've spoken many times, I'm not much of a fan of surgery when radiation can accomplish the same thing with less side effects. But when you're talking in academia about de debulking, they're talking about surgery or radiation or one of these other methods. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you that we're a nonprofit organization. If you would like to join our cause to get these videos out to people all over the world, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my conversation about debulking. Let's say you know you have a metastatic patient. Are there spots you need to treat faster than another? Yes, I'd say so. The, of course, the whole concept of speed in prostate cancer is oftentimes overemphasized because with other types of cancers, lung, pancreas, stomach, bone cancers, speed becomes a real issue. But with prostate cancer, that uh, probably doesn't present a prominent problem except in people that are uh, hormone resistant and have cancers that are moving along more quickly. Uh, there's generally time to be uh, very methodical about what you do. But historically, we've always looked at the metastatic lesions as being more problematic than the cancers that are still inside the prostate. As far as debulking the prostate, you know, my thought process is that can lead to a lot of side effects, as you've mentioned. Now, is it common for somebody to just treat the metastatic lesions and leave the cancer in the prostate, or do you automatically, we have to treat that no matter what? So I'd say historically, metastatic lesions uh, were not treated at all, except with what we call systemic therapies, hormone treatments, chemo treatments, immune treatments. Chasing down metastatic lesions and radiating them is a fairly new concept and is ga rapidly gathering steam, I think primarily because our scanning techniques have gotten better. So when we're detecting metastatic disease in 2023 with modern technology, we tend to believe that those lesions that we see represent most, if not all, of the cancer. So if there's only three or four of them, why not zap them and get rid of them? Uh, the long-term outcomes should be very favorable, and I believe they will be. The historical problem with the older scans, bone scans, CAT scans, is that uh, it was learned with experience that when you did um, scanning in those individuals, that really was just the tip of the iceberg. And so there would be other smaller lesions that these relatively blind scans were missing. And so you're kind of kidding yourself. So we treat three spots, but unbeknownst to the doctors, uh, there's 10 more spots that are smaller that are not being visualized. So you're not really accomplishing much. So this has been a radical paradigm shift in the last three to five years with the better scans that we have and the realization that, at least with prostate cancer, that there is a great value in going out and getting rid of those metastatic lesions. And then in addition, as we're talking about today, if there is 
persistent cancer in the prostate, getting rid of that as well. So when you have like the concept of debulking, you know, there's so many side effects. There's always the standard of care, you know, it's like prostate surgery. There's always these ways where there's the typical way that maybe a urologist would go around it. But as a medical oncologist, are there ways that you handle cancer in the prostate, even when there's metastatic lesions present? Is it focal therapy? Is it spot radiation? Is it brachytherapy? Like how would you go about having maybe not the standard of care, but the gold standard? Uh, when you mention focal therapy, that uh, has become a bit more mainstream with our thinking at prostate oncology specialists. The idea that you're going to uh, reap some advantage by destroying a lot of healthy, normal prostate tissue is kind of counterintuitive to start with. The reason that that's always been the standard approach was that due to inferior scans, there was always uncertainty as to where the tumor was and not getting the job done the first time is a real mess. To increase confidence that you're really gonna get the job done, the policy has always been to treat the whole gland. But now with better scanning techniques, we can be pretty confident that we know where the tumor is. And if we can find mavens, talented doctors that can just treat where the tumor is, focal therapy then I think becomes a much more desirable option. So, you know, when we talk about oligometastatic disease, we talk about, you know, less than five, you know, spots, uh, metastatic lesions. But what about the people who are not in that case? They have more than five and it's, you know, throughout the body. Do you still want to debulk the prostate in those situations? So this is a more controversial area. At the get-go, it sounds kind of ridiculous that uh, treating the, the, the tumor in the prostate is going to be useful for people who have, say, 20 metastatic lesions. But there is some evidence that people may be benefited by that in terms of overall disease control. Sometimes that is the largest lesion being where everything started from. And in the old days, concerns about the disease in the prostate just getting so out of control that it could block urination, block kidney function, and, uh, and create a local disaster, so to speak, was also a consideration in doing treatment to the prostate, even though you know you're not going to cure the individual. This is more controversial, but it is not uh, an unrealistic discussion with patients to talk with their physicians and say, is there an advantage to treating the primary tumor, the so-called debulking approach? I think if the treatment can be done effectively with minimal collateral damage, uh, that it should be discussed. When you're bringing this up with a patient, how are you, you know, talking about, how are you discussing the concept of quality of life versus debulking the prostate? Because it seems to me like the possibility of even having more side effects when you're already going through treatment and you're already dealing with cancer, that's quite extensive and it's something that can be quite difficult to deal with. I think another thing to realize is that when you bring such effective systemic therapies to the table that we have, um, hormone treatments are amazingly effective in prostate cancer. The idea of men having widespread metastatic disease can oftentimes be reversed with systemic therapy. So you're, you're looking at people that may have 20 lesions prior to starting Zytiga and Lupron, but after six to 10 to 12 months, those lesions have disappeared and, and they're uh, in remission. That, of course, is a stronger argument than to maybe go back to if there's a persistent larger tumor that was starting in the prostate to getting rid of it. The side effects of modern radiation therapy for treating the prostate, uh, so-called debulking procedure, are in skillful hands pretty minimal. Uh, you can get SBRT, five visits over 10 days. With space sore, there should be no uh, rectal damage. Uh, the main concern is always the development of erectile dysfunction, but when men are already on Lupron for extended periods, is, is uh, not as big a concern. So, uh, so the downside really isn't that great. So what would be the biggest benefit to debulking? Is there like a percentage survival rate where we're going to see a better outcome if somebody debulks, or is it case dependent on the patient? Yeah, so it appears that there are individuals, you're never going to know who which ones, but there are individuals with metastatic disease that undergo treatment to the primary tumor who will be better off and even live longer. And that is why this whole discussion still has life. It uh, seems counterintuitive, but there have been studies. They're not perfect studies, but studies which do seem to show a benefit for a certain number of individuals. And when we're fighting widely metastatic disease, this is a cat fight. You're, any tools that might have some potential advantage at least need to be discussed as a potential uh, benefit for these patients that need everything they can get.
So today we talked about debulking the prostate. There's a couple things I wanted to point out. Number one, debulking the prostate usually is used in combination with the different therapies to make sure that we're treating the whole body. You're treating the metastatic lesions that are you know, around the body, but then you're treating the localized disease as well. Now, the reason we're bringing this up is you know, Dr. Scholz and Dr. Kwan and Dr. Moyad had multiple discussions throughout our conference about advanced disease. And really, debulking is meant to be a tool in combination, but to show that there is actually increased survival in some cases if this is used. The main point is bring this up with your medical oncologist. Bring this up with your doctor. See if this is an option for you. I can only imagine the anxiety and the pain that it must be to not only have prostate cancer, but then to find out it's metastatic. And we want to be here as a resource for you. I would really encourage you to go watch the conversation between Dr. Moyad and Dr. Kwan in the recent conference here in September because they did a really great job of discussing options for patients with widespread metastatic disease even when they were told they did not have options. And you even hear Dr. Kwan's frustration for patients who, you know, were told that there are no options when even some standard therapies or combinations of therapies were available to them and could have worked, but they were never told that. So the main point is advocate for yourself. It's not that your doctors are, you know, lackadaisical or something. They're not on purpose trying to not treat you. It's that there's limited time for conversations and you need to advocate. Make sure you're getting second, third, sometimes even fourth opinions. Make sure that you're doing your research and you're advocating for yourself. We have seen the best outcomes overall come from patients who are advocating for themselves. And this conversation about debulking is just another tool in your arsenal to talk to your physicians and see if it's an option for you. Again, I know many, many, many metastatic men who are now in remission because they had a different combination of treatment or something worked, sometimes standard, standard therapy, sometimes a combination of those things. And it's really important to make sure that you have hope through this situation and that you find somebody, a physician, who's really willing to work with you and answer your questions. If you need help with your particular case, please, you know, contact us. We have men who have had metastatic prostate cancer and they can help you kind of work through what your questions are and work through the information, help you find research and different things to discuss with your medical team. And please remember that you're not alone. You know, PCRI is built to be here for you, but there's other advocacy groups you can also find on our website, support groups. You know, we want to make sure that you are supported mentally, physically, and emotionally as much as we can. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you